In this Tecla Structures Tips video, we are going to be diving into the new property set definition interface that is available in Tecla Structures 2024. These property set definitions relate to the properties that we are going to export with our IFC models that are related to those individual IFC entities or IFC um, model objects. We're going to give an overview of the renewed IFC property set export. You can see the interface here. We're going to understand how to customize these property sets, how we can add in the standardized property set groups by Building Smart, and then we'll view how this information is accessed in Triple Connect. Let's navigate to the IFC export menu so we can view where these property sets can be modified. We can access these property sets in both of these IFC export options, whether it's IFC or IFC4. Let's just use IFC. And now when we select on the edit button for property sets, you'll notice that there's a new user interface for customizing our property sets. Uh, this makes it easier to find and map uh, the Tecla properties to our IFC properties. Uh, it's a lot more intuitive. We can import and easily add standardized property set definitions that are from Building Smart. So overall, this is going to make it a lot easier to define exactly what you want to have exported with your IFC files. Let's go ahead and just create a brand new property set definition. And we'll take a look at all of the features inside of this new interface. So let's first manually define a property set definition for uh, this configuration file. Let's give this property set a name. And we can have these property sets just be for one type of object, or it could be for several objects. So I'm going to do a more specific example. I'm going to create a property set for poor objects and one for reinforcement. So let's call this poor object information. A description, all relevant attributes for concrete pores. We can even define a filter for these objects. This is a new filter save setting, so you might just have a standard property there. We can also come into this dialog and add in our own filter. So let's go ahead and create one. We'll call this poor object. And let's delete these rows out. I'll add two rows, works one row. We just need to define that the object type is a poor object. There we go. I'll go ahead and save that. And then I can use that filter for this property set group. If you're ever exporting some property set definitions that you've created and you notice you do not see them if you are viewing them in Trimble Connect or some other software. It could be because you're not selecting the correct IFC entity type. You could select every single one of these to make sure you have that option for everyone. Uh, you can also just select the uh, specific group uh, that applies for that type of object. For poor objects, it's IFC building element proxy. But if you're unsure too, you can always just check more to make sure you've got that covered. So I'm going ahead and add this property set definition and let's add another one for rebar. Reinforcement data. We can make another filter here. Let's make one that is for reinforcement or rebar. Similar definition type. So let's just define that the object type is a reinforcing bar. I'll save that. Now that's available in the drop down of my model. You want to make sure to place those in your firm folder. Now I'm going to browse to the sections again where the, the relevant information is. So these are the entity types that um, I'll be wanting to get information about. So now I'll just press add. And we can also have several 
uh, property set groups here and you can choose to include them in the export um, or or not just by checking that box there now for each of these groups they're gonna have different properties on the bottom so now I'm gonna select on the port object information let's click on the plus icon here and this is going to be called let's uh let's first grab the pour type So I can search for that property. If it's not in the list, you can always type in the attribute, uh, the, the template attribute or user defined attribute that you want to use. Uh, we'll make sure to choose the correct type. So the poor type is, is just like the name, it's a string. So I'll add that. Let's go and add another one here. I'll do the poor number. Add that. And we'll do one or two more. We'll do the poor planned start and end. So I'll add that and we can just keep this menu open. Add that one and there we go. Now this name on the left side, it doesn't need to match what the property name is. Let's edit this first row just so we can view that in Trimble Connect where the IFC properties can be read. So I'll just change this a little bit, call that poor type, and then I'll modify it. You can see it's updated the name there. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Definition file. And we're going to want to make sure that we have a definition for our rebar. So let's go ahead and add that. Uh, this will also be a good opportunity to show how we can get industry standardized properties um, from Building Smart. You might just want to grab those properties uh, because most likely that, that'll be a lot of data you want um, for, for your workflow if there's only a certain amount of you know properties you need you could add them in manually but let's go ahead and show how we can import these property sets now I can search for a group of um, properties like if I type in reinforcing bar let's add this uh, definition here so I'll press on import and that's actually going to create a new row here so I could delete my old one um, and, uh, and and just use this one if I wanted to. You can see it's going to fill in. Uh, it could fill in a lot of the information for us. There could be properties that we might not have a uh, you know an attribute map to. So you could link these fields like status. I could enter in a user defined attribute here for what that status is supposed to be. So let's save this. So we can't save it yet. We still have to define one for rebar. So let's go ahead and search for a couple properties for rebar. Call this bar mark. Add that in. Let's add a couple dimensions in for the leg lengths. I'll just say that's A. We'll do dim B and dim C. Okay, so I'll add that in. I'm good to go. I have the length of um, measure set there. Let's actually edit these two so they are using the correct unit. So let's say I want to use feet. Let's modify that one and these other two. Okay, so we are good to go now. So now that we have properties for each of these groups, I'll go ahead and press save. And now we can close out. 
if you are you know just starting with customization if you haven't you know set up property set definitions before you could also grab some groups from the drop down like we might have added some as a part of our, our localization um, so you can either start with these and remove or add what you'd like you can also copy these property groups so i can duplicate this and rename it modify it and so i can start not necessarily from scratch but you can take what's been localized or the properties out of the box and customize them to your liking so now let's exit out of this properties window And now I can select that setting that I just created, 2024 IFC export. And let's just select this entire structure here. And let's export. And then we'll go take a look and trim will connect and see how these properties are viewed. Once I exported the IFC, I placed that into a Trimble Connect project. Now I'm going to open that in our Trimble Connect web version. And let's view how this data is going to be organized then when reviewing information for these IFC objects. So let's select on my poor object and I'll click on the info button. Now the name of this property group, you'll notice that it's going to match with this property group, um, how these IFC properties are organized. And then of course, for each of these groups, we're gonna have all of the properties that we defined. So the poor type, the poor number, my start date, and my end date. In that first example I was showing, you can type something more descriptive. It doesn't have to be the Tecla property name that you're defining, it could be a more uh, you know, human readable text that, that'll be easy to comprehend. Now let's go on to our rebar. So I'll go ahead and hide my selected pour. Let's select on reinforcement. And in my rebar group, again, here you can see the, uh, the bar mark, the, all the names matching, of course. Um, and then we have each of these properties for a certain property, it might not export if, um, if if that property doesn't exist on the part. For that bar shape, it didn't have the MC, so we're not viewing that um, under this group. And then our property set definition group that we brought in from Building Smart, same case here. So we've got the name defined in that group and all of the relevant properties that were set to be included in our export. And that concludes the content for this video. We were reviewing the new update to the UI for property set definitions um, in Tecla structures. The, the UI is a lot more user friendly and, and customizable. It's easy to see which data you are exporting for certain groups of objects. Uh, we have support now for the building smart properties that you can import in. And hopefully this is gonna be a better experience, easier experience to start setting up your custom property set definitions. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching.